Stay a while and listen. So this time I felt like having a little laid back chat about sword fighting and my personal journey so far. So this is really just about my personal experience. It's not practical information on how to get into it or anything like that. It's really just story time in short. So if uh, if you're interested in that, then feel free to stick around. Uh, so I've been interested in this stuff almost my entire life. Sometimes people ask, how did you get into sword collecting and then all of this? I don't know. I cannot pinpoint it. It's since my childhood, I've been fascinated by that kind of stuff. I've been uh, in the 80s when I was around, you know, six, seven, eight-ish. I was a huge Masters of the Universe fan. I didn't have the mental capacity at the time to realize just how cringy and cheesy it was and horrendous. And <laughs> I mean, it was at a time where the He-Man ha haircut was considered acceptable. It's hard to imagine nowadays, but either way. So <laughs> that's kind of how it started. I collected action figures and you know, that sort of thing. And then it just, it just um, kind of stuck with me. And I uh, got my first sword, sword-like object, I should say, which was actually a cheap wall hanger ninja toad, which was, oh, shitty. <laughs> That's really all I can say. It was pure junk. But uh, yeah, that was when I was, I think, 16-ish, 16 or 17. And yeah, I just went from there. I, <laughs> I was ignorant and stupid as a teenager, delusional in the sense that I actually thought I had a natural affinity towards sword fighting. Like I would have an easy time learning it and figuring it out because somehow, bleh, whatever bizarre thoughts I had. And so I, I did things. Kara and I made padded practice weapons and uh, did some sparring and, and actually thought we were, you know, doing something, learning sword fighting or weapons in general. We also experimented with padded spears and axes and shields and whatnot. So <laughs> it was fun exercise, no doubt about that but we had zero idea what we were doing. And it's hilarious that I ever thought I had even the faintest clue. At one point, I even uploaded a video on YouTube of some of that. I mean, I uploaded a couple of them. None of them exist anymore because cringe. They were removed a long time ago. <laughs> so um, there was one I remember that I uploaded where I tried to figure out movements with a two-handed axe. I just did basically my my own attempt at a kata, if you will, and you know just moving around and you know, swinging the, the axe and, and you know, trying to uh, do attacks and defenses and then moving and blah. It was ridiculous. I mean, not quite Star Wars kid level. It wasn't quite that embarrassing, but it was bad. And I remember there was one comment from a person who who said that you're, you're clearly an amateur, but having thought about these things puts you ahead of anybody who hasn't. And I remember I was, I was kind of offended a little bit. Like, amateur, how dare you? <laughs> Super hilarious and ironic and everything. He was completely right. I mean, I had, yeah. In fact, he was being too nice. Amateur was putting it too nicely. Um, and then, you know, over time, I more and more realized that, hey, I, I actually know nothing. I, I really don't know what I'm doing. And again, I continued you know, sparring with friends. At that point, we got somewhat better equipment. We got uh, padded sparring swords from Hong Kong, it's realistic sparring weapons. They still exist. They still make those. I think we got them in around 2010, I think. 
no, 2009, whatever, my, my memory, eh, who cares? So then we, we tried around with that. Um, over time, I became aware of the fact that there is such a thing as historical manuals and that some people actually study them and figure out techniques and then, you know, actually can start learning real sword fighting as opposed to just whatever, improvised flailing. So then I looked some of that up and what materials I could find and uh, tr started trying to uh, find out how that works. And you know, it helped a little bit. I still thought that, well, okay, so I'm, I'm overall, I don't really know, but I'm not doing too poorly. I was still having kind of somewhat naively optimistic view of the whole thing. But I mean, I should have real, realized that the mere fact that my friends who never were taught, who didn't practice any martial art, who just picked up these things and just swung them around intuitively any way they felt like, they were still hitting me. I mean, I was overall doing better, but still, basically, if you know a martial art, if you have at least, you know, basic competence and you're dealing with somebody who has no clue, just picks it up and goes, they should have very little chance against you. I mean, I now realize what sort of skill range we're talking here. Like somebody who is moderately experienced at HEMA against a complete newbie is going to dominate and destroy that person. This is really occasional lucky hits. Basically, the best the, the complete amateur can hope for is double hits. So that's really how it goes. And I think a lot of people underestimate that. Um, in fact, I've seen some what I like to call keyboard warrior comments on a few of the sparring videos with uh, Lee Smith and Richard Marsden, who are both very competent, experienced HEMA instructors, have both won medals in tournaments. In fact, the, the wall at, at Blunt Iron is full of medals that Lee and his students have won. So these guys know what they're doing, but there were still some you know, keyboard warriors who are just like, yeah, I could beat them, or they're moving so slowly, or whatever, you know. I mean, it's it, it's pretty funny. This is not meant to meant to harp on about, oh yeah, we HEMA guys, we are so badass, and whatever. No, 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 none of that. It's just, I mean, credit where credit is due. These guys in particular have invested so much time and work into the art, and it shows. That's really all you can say about that. Um, it's it's easy to underestimate just how much you have to train for that. If you're doing like whatever, like, like three hours or four hours a week of sword practice or even less, like two hours and it's nowhere near enough to get competent in any reasonable amount of time. You have to practice, I mean, Currently, I practice three to four times a week, and it's two-hour classes each time. I don't feel like I'm progressing very rapidly. I'm, I'm progressing, but it takes a lot of time. Uh, but I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, actually. So then um, I was still at story time, actually. Sorry for this being disjointed, but, you know, that's what happens when you just naturally talk. So I then I, I moved to another place and I, I practiced with uh, different friends and we um, we were a little more serious about it. We were actually looking at historical techniques and trying to interpret them, which is difficult if you go just by the text alone uh, without, I mean, this is of course how HEMA started. It is possible to figure that out, but it's difficult. And we had you know, reasonably good gear. We had you know, fencing masks and uh, elbow and knee protectors and that sort of thing. We didn't have the body mechanics down. Uh, we were basically just swinging with our arms, which is far weaker than actually engaging the core and, and you know aligning everything so that you transfer you know ma the, the maximum amount of energy to the target. 
Um, so it's, it's a lot less efficient, which generally is a term that I would apply to our training, uh, less efficient than it could have been for sure. So again, it was fun exercise and all of that. Aside from the, the one time I injured my knee, which I'm still dealing with after one and a half years. So yeah, you can mess yourself up, of course. And I then realized just again how how poor I am in, in terms of skills. Uh, like I'm a complete beginner. I called myself a beginner, and that's what I was. I still put up the sparring videos because you know just for, for entertainment and all of that. Um, people have asked me why those are gone, and it's really because since I joined Blood and Iron, an actual professional historical European martial arts school, I've realized just how bad that sparring was, those videos. And I do not want anybody to look at that and go, oh, so that's how they fought historically. No, not at all. It depends, of course. Not everybody was professionally trained and sometimes peasants did end up on the battlefield and who had to defend themselves with, you know, wood cutting axes and, and pitchforks and, and all of that. So, of course, there were plenty of fights with completely unskilled people who were pretty much acting like that. But, you know, professionals, um, <laughs> duelists and, and professional soldiers and knights, definitely not. So, anyway, so then I joined Blood and Iron and it became very quickly, very clear just how much training is involved. Before that, I did, you know, semi-regular practice. I think it was about, you know, once or twice a week. Occasionally we also skipped a week because we didn't have time or whatever. And overall, I'd say before I joined the HEMA school, I, I was probably at it trying to figure it out for between one and three years. I say between because I said it was kind of on and off. It was, you know, kind of irregular. But uh, then since I joined there, I've been practicing under uh, you know, competent instruction for a bit over a year, uh, minus a couple of months because I was hit by a car and had to recover from that and couldn't practice at all during that time. I had a bit of a head start compared to other people because I've been trying to figure this out on my own. I got my first rank more quickly than is, is usually the case. But then afterwards, it, you know, the advantage turned into more of a disadvantage because I had all those bad habits to deal with. For example, footwork. When we tried to figure things out on our own, we knew nothing about footwork. And it was all, you know, heel stepping and kind of irregular movement. And we, we didn't know how to advance and retreat. And I, I had a vague idea of what triangle steps are, but didn't do them very well. And it, it shows. And I definitely got some bad habits from that. So footwork is something that I, I still have to improve a lot. And overall, I, I improved substantially. I can definitely tell that. But even after you know, about a year of this, I would still consider myself maybe something like an advanced beginner or kind of low intermediate. I found it a bit hard to to uh, estimate that because I mean, all these categories like beginner, intermediate or advanced or professional or whatever, those are all arbitrary. There is no way to quantify that and measure that how good you are. Uh, if, if somebody tells you, oh yeah, I've been doing this for 10 years. What have you been doing for 10 years? You, you may have been doing complete garbage for 10 years, you know, without knowing what you were doing. You know, what I was doing before, you know, if I had been doing that for 10 years, I would still be a clueless idiot for the most part. You know, the, the time in and of itself doesn't really tell you anything. The quality of the training is the important part, and that's what you can't really quantify. So either way, so there was a lot to be learned. And there is still so much. The more I learn, the more I realize how little I know and how much I need to improve on. 
I'm sure if you've ever you know, practiced any martial art or any skill, really, the better you get, the more you realize how much more there is and how little you know and how much more you have to improve. So I think it's very easy for people to underestimate. Well, basically, you have two camps. You have either uh, people who say that you have to train your entire life, you have to train for 40 years to really master the art, and before that, you're nothing. Uh, that's a bit extreme. I mean, it's, as with any skill, in the beginning, you learn pretty rapidly. The, the progress is is at a very quick rate at first, and then it kind of starts to slow down, and then you get into that uh, area where you, know, you improve a little, then you plateau, then you improve a little more, then you plateau, and, and so on and so forth it goes, uh, which is you know the case with a lot of things. It even applies to things like bodybuilding, for example. People in the first year make all kinds of gains, and then after that it, it just gets harder and harder to improve. So you can get somewhat competent after a year or two of regular training. Now, again, it depends on the volume, of course. If you practice like one or two hours a week, then that's not going to help too terribly much. But, you know, if somebody were to practice for 20 hours a week, you know, Ain't nobody got time for that, I know. But if somebody were to do that, they would improve, of course, fairly quickly. But either way, so you don't have to be at it for 30 years in order to be good. However, it does take a very, very long time to get really decent at something because you have to repeat the same thing ad nauseum again and again and again and again. So when we... When I practice with my friends informally, we would you know, try to figure out a technique and then we almost went pretty much straight to sparring instead of going, okay, this technique, let's just repeat this, you know, just solo drills, just go through, throw this one cut for like, you know, thousands of times. You have to do it for long enough that it becomes ingrained as a pattern that your body kind of defaults to because otherwise if you have to think about how was this technique again? Let me see. Boom. You're already hit and out of it. And, and that's you, you can't operate that way in, in, a, in a fight. It can be easy to trick yourself into believing that you're more competent than you are because you're just practicing with your friends who know even less than you do. And you beat them consistently. And then you think, oh, yeah, I'm pretty good at this. And then you face somebody who, who's practiced seriously for couple of years and you just get completely destroyed <laughs> that's that's really how it goes and uh, it's always good to keep your ego in check and just you know, focus on doing the, the work putting in the time and effort and then you'll get the, the results and now i sound like the people at blood and iron it they also have a channel by the way youtube youtube channel i'll link it down below um that's what they usually say um yeah so that shall be enough for story time Right now, I hope you found it probably relaxing, maybe somewhat entertaining or whatever. And have a good day. Thanks for watching.